Ooh, this is steaming. Is it delicious? Ooh, absolutely delicious. So if we walk up to your South Philly location, we get these to go? Uh, you can get these to go on the weekends. We do our hot chocolate and our hot cider on the weekends. Um, so if you're here Friday and Saturday, hot chocolate will definitely be an option. But Wednesday through Sunday, we always have our hot cider with um, honey whiskey. So stop by and grab that as well. Um, and last but not least, first and foremost, we are a whiskey and spirits company. Um, so we're selling our bottles here. If you are one of those people that wants to experiment, come on down, stop by the shop, grab a bottle, head home and uh, become your own bartender. So remind us where your location is. Um, we are right by the Singing Fountain on Pash Young Avenue, uh, just south. And uh, we're pretty hard to miss if you're at the fountain because you'll see the big Manitani Stillworks and Spirits sign. All right. So everybody's going to get their stocking stuffers with you and some hot toddies. And I always love seeing you. Thank you guys so much. You are very welcome. Happy holidays to everyone. Can't wait to see you guys next month. Absolutely. All right, guys, have a good one. So with that, uh, we are going to start tonight's program, which is really wonderful. And I'm going in alphabetical order this time, starting with Bertrand Productions and No Fair. Stacy Lee Weber and Joseph Leroux will be talking about the concept behind No Fair and the 20 artists they have curated into a cash and carry exhibition in the galleries at Globe Dye Works. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah, we decided, um, as you know, that we travel and we're both artists and we do shows on the road, um, that as those shows started to get canceled, uh, we were going to kind of figure out a way to host an exhibition um, that was going to allow a lot of the people we know from being on the road uh, to have an opportunity to kind of get into a market where they know that they're kind of comfortable selling things. Um, and so we put together this video. Yeah, we have a little video to tell you about the gallery um, and the show that's currently up titled No Fair. So we're gonna share our screen with you and then play the video. Um, might just take a second. Hello everybody, Joseph LaRue here. Uh, one of the co-owners of Bertram Productions uh, in North Philly, it's a contemporary art space. And we're here to talk about our current exhibition, No Fair, which is up till December 6th, uh, coming up pretty soon. Basically, uh, as you all know, all of the exhibitions and fairs and that kind of thing in the beginning of COVID had gotten canceled. And many of the people we know who do those fairs for a living didn't really have a lot of opportunities outside of those fairs and shows. And so Stacy and I decided that we were going to host an exhibition uh, in our gallery and the guys at Globe Dye Works were also generous enough to donate the gallery downstairs uh, to have 20 exhibitors exhibit work that would normally have kind of been in those trade. And of course, from the years of doing the shows, we felt like we had a pretty good handle on who we would want in the exhibition. Some of it was based on just the style of work and what we were the most interested in. Some of it was that um, due to the nature of having a show where many of our appointments and many of the people who are going to see the show are gonna see it via the internet or FaceTime, um, and you know, a select few would actually come in person in small groups and we would give tours. So what you're looking at here is our gallery upstairs, the first floor of Bertrand Productions. And this is Evan Chambers' work, uh, the light pieces, along with three jewelers. We decided to highlight the jewelers in these oval-shaped uh, CNC cut wood displays. And we asked each artist to give us about 10 pieces. So we had no idea what the artists were going to give us, and it just really worked out between text messages and conversations really closely with the artists um, of what our displays were going to look like and what they were going to show. And it really came together in a really awesome show. The jewelers are all upstairs in our Bertrand Productions gallery, 
And then along with a couple other people, including Peter Park, who has the furniture, who's from Philadelphia, uh, Jonathan White from Portland, Maine, the four jewelers in the back, along with Tanisha Dodgetree, who has the weavings in the middle of the basketry. So Tanisha is an artist that we recently um, became acquainted with. She's a little bit newer to doing fairs and shows, and we really loved her work, and we're excited to bring her into our No Fair exhibition. Some of the other people we have worked with and been friends with for longer and actually have built a really cool like show community, um, including Jonathan White. He does amazing ceramic hand-built uh, pieces. This piece is his, this is very industrial and um, inspired by many factories that he's walked around in, inside. So we're going now past the last four jewelers, uh, Ford and Ford Lano, Kate Danenberg, then we've got Maria Ife and Biba Schutz, all at various stages of their careers in jewelry. Uh, and we thought it was interesting that we had the show where they're all kind of together in this more gallery-like setting. Then headed downstairs, uh, this is the gallery that Globe donated the space. And we felt like this space is just really good for exhibiting more kind of large scale work, which is why a lot of the furniture ended up down here. So our downstairs space has eight larger works, um, artists and artists that were able to give us a little more artwork, uh, including Ani Costin, who has ceramic sculpture and functional pieces. She's from Minneapolis. Um, and we are super excited to be able to show some big works of hers. Also included are some of my wall pieces, Stacey Weber on the back wall, coins that have been cut out with a jeweler's saw and designed into wall pieces. Alongside me is Liz Pachasek, who has functional ceramics, small, tiny cups, juice cups, bigger vessels, all hand drawn. And then next to her is another ceramic artist, Aron Kim who has more self-portrait sculptural pieces. Her new works include some wall pieces um, mixed with ceramics. Uh, we are really excited to have all these artists in this big space, the Globe Gallery, show off their work with a lot of room around all the artists, including Kimmy Cantrell, Luke Proctor. Um, the furniture there in front of us is welded steel from Luke. And so one of the artists, James Pierce, another artist in the show, actually brought Luke's work all the way from Wisconsin. And James is in Illinois. So they got together and put it all in a van and drove all the way to Philadelphia for this show. Yeah, and so usually Stacy and I are the curators and kind of taking care of all the shipping and all of the setting up and displays and everything. And while we took a big part in this show, I have to say this was a real group effort in just getting the work here and getting it all set up. James Pierce came and um, you know helped set up the entire downstairs exhibition and drove work all the way out in the Midwest. Richard uh, drove work out from New York City. Naron Kim drove work out from New York City. So there was a, a lot of work just you know getting all the pieces here, especially um, you know during the pandemic, which has made everything you know much more difficult. We've got a few pieces from James Pierce here now. Uh, these are all fabricated and constructed wood uh, with various finishes and things on them. So we would love to have you come out to the show. It's open until December 6th. Uh, we're doing cash and carry. So I honestly, like a lot of what you see here, uh, there's already work gone. And, um, you know, we're hoping to just make sales and kind of keep these artists uh, on their feet until the pandemic is over. So thanks for coming and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye, take care. All right. <laughs> so we have a, a tendency to say um, things are inappropriate. So we figured we'd do a video so that we uh, you know, <laughs> could control what we were saying, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna comment on how well you throw your voices. Because I kept looking at you, and you're sitting there like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, we're super excited to show you guys the fair. We worked hard on the video, um, which we've never put together that quite that elaborate of a video of a whole show. Um, and this whole show has been experimental for us, I think, and as also the artist uh, going through COVID. And I think it's been great and interesting and different, just like all of pandemic times. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to, if you guys have any questions, this is the last weekend for the show till Sunday at five, I guess, um, is the last time to book an appointment. And you can go to our website, which we'll type in, or our Instagram, um, Bertrand Productions, Bertrand underscore Productions. Bertrand is Joe's middle name, which is always very <laughs> mysterious to people. We need to be able to show my work without people knowing who I am. So there's a... <laughs> Are there any questions we're missing on the chat, Layla? Uh, or trying to put in... Let me unmute myself. That might help. Um, great idea. We want to hear some inappropriate things, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why else do we live in Philly? We try not to do inappropriate things on camera. <laughs> please, please include your website in the chat. Yeah, I just linked that. Beautifully displayed, wonderful work. Uh, how about the sale? Yeah, so sales, right. we back, so a lot of what you saw in the video uh, we didn't quite think of this ahead of time, but we have been letting people take the work as it sells throughout the exhibition. And so there's quite a few pieces missing from the, the show already. Um, as of yesterday, we hit about 25,000 in sales, which uh, yeah. for the first time out for this, it was like, uh, you know, it was a test for us and it was a test for a lot of the artists. And um, yeah, I think we've we feel it's been successful already and still Sunday to go. But as far as sales to the artists, maybe is the question is, um, we had different ideas, but I think at the end of the day with sales tax that is being added and um, we just are gonna pay out artists with a check and probably have to get a lot of 1099s at the end of the year. Um, yeah, and so, well, each artist, we decided from the beginning that uh, this was uh, an opportunity for us to like, uh, basically get artists in on something that they could get 100% of their own sales. And so we've never done that as a gallery, but um, it, it just seemed like timing was right. And uh, it was going to take a lot of time from us this month as far as documenting. And we built the displays and did all that kind of stuff. But honestly, like the 20 people in the show are, you know, pretty good friends of ours. And um, we've been able to figure out how to change our business to more of an online model. And so uh, we were feeling like we weren't doing, well, we were just doing okay with COVID and our business and everything going okay. And so we felt like we had the time and kind of the energy to uh, kind of donate to the project uh, to see it happen. So yeah. if, if there's somebody watching right now that wants to make an appointment to see you, can, how do they do that? Yeah, they can go to either the website I listed, virtualproductions.com and just hit the book now appointment which feeds into an appointment book that we both get an email that says you got scheduled an appointment for Saturday at noon or, or the same appointment book is hooked also to our Instagram, which is Bertrand underscore productions, which has a book now tab. And for people who are not as comfortable coming out in the public and going to an exhibition, I mean, it's only Stacy and I, but even at that, there are people who are not comfortable with that. Uh, we are doing FaceTime appointments. So, and so when you book your appointment via website or Instagram, you can clarify whether you want to actually see us in person or whether you want to have a virtual appointment. Oh, oh maybe I just um, typed it to a certain person, but I'll put every, to everyone in the, um, for the website. It's been a huge learning lesson for us. And I feel like we've, at this point, are excited to kind of take what we've learned to, um, you know, to further our own practice and the gallery itself. Um, we got our first appointment, or our first or second on the book now button, and we're waiting for the person at like a certain time, like, okay, when are they coming? And then realized it was a virtual appointment and they wanted us to like FaceTime them, and we did, and it was really awesome and it was a fun experience, but we, it's kind of, I think COVID has been enlightening in that we can connect so easily and have had this technology for, for many years and haven't utilized it. So 
to me, that's a definitely a huge silver lining is that we showed someone the show in Wisconsin the other day and they bought yeah. a piece and that was like, oh my God. And for anybody wanting to book an appointment, because obviously there's only a few days left, um, if you can't get an appointment through the book now, because we have uh, basically the way that program is set up, there's a 48 hour window in front of us where you can't book an appointment uh, because it it's... Um, yeah, just it's so that we can or... schedule for people to actually come. You can just text us. You can Instagram message us. You can email us. Yeah. Like basically, we live where the gallery is. So <laughs> if you want to come, uh, we will make an opportunity for you to do that within reason. <laughs> within, within reason. reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we set up. I think early on that we needed two days to book an appointment. So now that it's kind of winding down, it hasn't. It won't let us change the two day. Anyway. But another thing is, even on the Instagram, we've spent all month documenting each of the artists' work and trying to put out really high quality imagery of like what you're actually going to see when you come here. And so even just scrolling through like the last 20 days or so of Instagram, um, you'll see a lot of pretty high quality images of uh, various artists throughout the entire exhibition. I have to say, you guys... Uh, the exhibition looks gorgeous. Of course, I follow you on social media. Everything looks amazing. Congratulations. Um, the generosity you show to the community is outstanding. And um, thank you for sharing this exhibition with us tonight. I hope that everyone um, participating will be coming to see you at all hours. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, midnight with drinks on Zoom. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for Thank you. Thank you guys. So we're going to move on to our next visit with the Clay Studio and their curator of artistic programs, Jennifer Zwilling, is here to interview uh, the usefulness of use artist Yoko Sakino Bove, who exquisitely crafted pottery, whose exquisitely crafted pottery is inspired by her background in graphic design and her interest in classic pottery forms. Thank you, Layla. Thanks, Yoko, for being here. Thank you for having me. And Yoko is um, joining us from Washington, Pennsylvania, on the other side of the state. So this is another example of how we can take advantage of this technology, which I guess Zoom was hanging around before March 2020, but I didn't know about it. <laughs> but I sure know about it now. Thanks for inviting us. I'm just gonna introduce Yoko. Yoko Sakino Bove was born in Osaka, Japan. She graduated from Musashino Art University in Tokyo, Japan with a Bachelor in Fine Art and Graphic Design before moving to the US. She worked as a commercial designer in LA before her passion for ceramic art took her on a new path. She earned a Master of Fine Arts degree in ceramics from the University of Oklahoma and served as an artist in residence in the ceramic department of the Armory Art Center in West Palm Beach, Florida for a year. In 2005, Yoko moved to Washington, Pennsylvania and she started working from home, a home studio while teaching at local colleges and art centers. We're honored to have um, a special exhibition of Yoko's work. We have often carried her work in the clay studios shop um, but it is, I have to tell you, thrilling to walk into a room filled with Yoko's amazing imagery and forms and humor, <laughs> certainly. Um, so I thought I'd start out by asking Yoko about the inspiration for the work that is, was specially made for this exhibition, The Usefulness of Use. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so, hi, nice to meet you, everyone. Um, I started working as a ceramic artist or uh, uh, practicing ceramics as a hobby while I had my full-time job. Then decided maybe I should uh, try and see what's gonna happen. So I'm still seeing what's gonna happen next. <laughs> I, think you, I think you've seen what's gonna happen. You make amazing ceramic art. Uh, thank you. But because I feel like this is a gigantic experiment using my life, so I can play around and uh, I'm hoping that I can share the fun thing with other people. That's my goal as a ceramist. 
Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate that, that you are still experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when we started talking about the show and you thought of the title, um, I know that you also, you wrote really beautifully about um, why usefulness and exploring that is part of your practice. So I'm just going to read um, a little bit of your statement. Ever since the pandemic started, I've been wondering what I can do and how I can help. Is there anything to do for this world as an individual and as a ceramic artist? Um, the work explores the usefulness of craft in modern society and asks what comfort is derived from a simple daily ritual like drinking or coffee or tea when using a handmade object. Um, or as the case may be, alcoholic hot chocolate. <laughs> So, um, I, and I'm going to open um, a shared screen in a moment so everyone can see what I'm so excited about. But I'm, I just wanted to go back for one moment because when you were saying experiment, that goes really to a question I've been asking a lot of artists, which is about making the decision to have a life. And art is quite a brave decision, in my opinion. So even going into graphic design was brave. And now you, it sounds like you feel as though you have to be brave every day as you're making your ceramic art. Can you talk about that a little? Definitely, that I feel like uh, this is a great moment in my life that uh, I was given to enjoy. So I want to enjoy every second of it, what I can. And uh, as uh, you mentioned that, that in my statement, especially now more than ever, that I want to be helpful, I want to be useful, and uh, the best way I can think of is to, through my work, to connect to the people. And uh, I want to enjoy that possibility too. Yeah. Well, and that's so interesting. It's not just the objects that are useful, but you yourself want to be useful. Yes. Which I, that's beautiful. Um, on that note, I'm going to open my share screen so everyone can come out of suspense. Um, I'm going to pin you so you go to the top so everyone can see you. Let's see. Okay. So I think on that note, the most um, very specific piece that's about the pandemic, although there's another the second one that I put in is just amazing as well, but this is the survival award and everyone, it's also a shot glass, which is really what we all need. And it's tiny, it's just about um, four inches tall, three inches tall. So it's very special and um, it, it really is speaking to this moment. Um, I'm, I'm interested about the armadillo I know he has a little, he's got a little shield on him, so maybe that was part of. Well, don't you think that the Amadillo's best survival method is to just cut up and wait until the, the risk is gone? <laughs> so yeah. in a way, that's what we are doing during this pandemic, that we're just waiting by protecting ourselves in each little home or apartment or gallery space and the, I'm hoping that, that many people can feel the connection through this piece that we've been surviving and we should praise ourselves for doing a good job. We are still here and we are still fighting every day in a small scale. And I wanted to praise people for their resilience and patience. And that's beautiful. And I think every one of us deserves a survival award, <laughs> but only one person's going to get to buy it because there's only one. <laughs> um, there's a, you should make more, maybe. <laughs> um, so, and that's the other side. And that's something else about Yoko's work is that it is endlessly um, rewarding as you pick it up and turn it around and turn it over. And I think people can see that you're back design has a huge impact on the way that you apply imagery to your work. Um, you just have this incredible sense of 
the form of the piece and how to make the imagery really work um, in harmony with that. And sometimes you, um, as in this piece, you're working with the form and sometimes you're kind of intentionally forcing and not be able to see the whole image from one side, which I think is really um, wonderful that you kind of, um, you're asking the viewer to be active with the piece. So this is the lemonade maker. So do you want to tell us about this one? And I'll just look through, flip through the picture so people can see while you're talking. So the, this is a set out of the three pieces. The top part is the lemon squeezer. Yes, thank you. And uh, there's a tumbler to make the lemonade. Then the, the, the bottom one is the saucer. So that you can combine the top and the bottom to squeeze the lemon just the regular way. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. You are, <laughs> you are the best. I'm good at clicking the buttons. <laughs> or you can just squeeze the lemon into the tumbler directory. That's going to be up to you. But the idea is that um, you know, this is the time to make the lemonade for everyone. That again, it's the same idea of praising, encouraging, and uh, holding everyone's hand together, symbolically, conceptually. And uh, well, just like the saying, maybe we should look for the way to make lemonade out of this situation and uh, enjoy whatever that comes to us. So I wanted to, I may be just too optimistic, but I wanted to count the breath with everyone and yeah. least what we can. I, I'm inherently optimistic too, and I just, I, I, I'm grateful that I'm optimistic and I appreciate seeing it in other people. I think that those of us who like, um, kind of have a duty because it's harder for other people. So you're, 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 push, you're putting the, the cheerfulness out for everybody. Um, and another indication of the way your mind works kind of in overdrive, I think, is that you, you had two good ideas for what the bunny was doing. <laughs> so sometimes we feel like we're juggling these lemons and sometimes we're riding the lemon. I just, um, and my good uh, colleague Shannon made sure to, this is not a rabbit everyone, this is a jackalope. <laughs> yes, that, I like the idea of that playful, little evil, mystical creature that it's very American and uh, <laughs> It's, it's a good reminder that uh, everything is possible, right? It's very American, because it's mixed together, is that why? I don't know. Yeah, okay, so this is another one of a kind. If you need uh, something to remind you about 2020 and how many lemons you juggled. You know. <laughs> um, and then I know we don't have too much more time, so I just want to ask show one more. Um, this is one of those that tells the story and it's, it's almost like, um, you're watching a movie or seeing a cartoon as you're, as you're turning it. There's so many layers of meaning and storytelling and historical references in this. Um, so maybe you could tell us about the inspiration for the imagery beyond the point that these animals are making pottery. I mean, how much better can you get? <laughs> well, it's almost like an insider joke, right? Between the, the ceramic artist. But sometimes it's good to remind myself that, that there's still joyful things and uh, when we survive the, this pandemic then that, that there will be even more. So that the, uh, the original style of this drawing came from uh, one of the national treasures in Japan that's called the Choju Gigas. So that was a, a little playful drawings of the animals having fun together very random species and completely ignoring that the reality or scales, but um, that was that the, the drawings were done a few hundred years ago and are still cherished by the people because of the playfulness and the looseness of it. So I'm borrowing that idea of playful fun and the combining with my idea of loose pray for and lose fun of ceramic making. So this is almost like a reminder to myself 
that, that there's still fun things out there and that we can still connect to each other through craft medium. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, until I just looked at this picture giant on my screen, I hadn't noticed that the frog was sitting on broken pots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's kissing his pot and then he's sitting on this pile of broken. Yes, lots of sacrifice. The so kiln will break your heart. So are these pieces available for sale at the clay studio? They are, and I will put the information in the chat. And I know that we have reached our limit of time. Well, I can't my share. to come and visit you guys and see this exhibition, which officially opens tomorrow night. Is that correct? Well, <laughs> it, op it opens tomorrow. We're really, I mean, it's not night. We're not doing First Friday. We're not... Um, you know, we can't sort of ask people to gather in big groups. So uh, right. it's actually up now. So come anytime tomorrow and anytime for the next um, month. And the clay studio is allowing five visitors at a time. That's right. Everyone is masked, uh, hand sanitizer. And we are, um, yeah, have safe visitors. We have, everything's also online. So you can just look through the images that way and um, free local delivery of anyone in Philadelphia. Wow, that's generous. Well, thank you both for sharing that work tonight and a little bit of humor on ceramics. Um, while we transition to our next presenter, I would just wanna say, I hope you'll consider making a donation to Craft Now to help us continue to bring programs like this and advocate for the sector. I'm gonna put the link in the chat, of course. So um, I'd like to invite Mi Kyung Lee, director of the Craft and Material Studies program at University of the Arts, to talk about her recent collaboration for the exhibition Innovation in Fiber Art with um, a university in China, and they have a symposium tomorrow night. So Mi Kyung, thank you for being here with us tonight and sharing your recent work. Thank you, Leila. Uh, good to see everyone. It's really great to be here. And uh, I appreciate this amazing opportunity to promote uh, this project. So uh, let's start, everyone. Uh, so this project uh, is a collaboration project with uh, Professor Yue Song from Tsinghua University in Beijing. And I think that uh, this particular technology, you know, uh, talking about uh, uh, Joe's presentation and uh, uh, even, uh, you know, work with the Yoko, it's like we're kind of working in a virtual world. So it is very exciting to, to think about this unexpected way of a collaboration. Um, so this is actually started with the two years ago and, um, I was working with this project for the past two years and hoping, hope, hope, uh, hope to be as a, you know, in-person exhibition with the 20 artists from China, 20 artists from uh, United States of a leading, you know, uh, contemporary fiber textile artist who are really demonstrating, you know, broad spectrum of uh, uh, fiber textile processes and, you know, technology and innovation. So I want to maybe start with a, some sort of a small little background what it happens. So I can take you to actually Beijing here. <laughs> and this is actually Tsinghua University campus. So what you see is actually uh, Tsinghua University known as almost like a Harvard of China. It's a, one of the most uh, you know, well-known university. And this is actually a museum of their um, museum building across the street from the art building. And it's really monumental scale. Uh, so I was invited in 2018 to be part of, uh, you know, from Lausanne to, to Beijing International Fiber Biennale. Uh, some of you may recall the, uh, this historic, you know, uh, Lausanne Tapestry International Biennale, which ended in 1995. So actually uh, one of the faculty brought to Beijing. So this is the inside of a museum. Again, grand scale. And so I was be part of this international exhibition along with uh, just a really major leading and emerging artists from China and the United States and Europe. So it was really exciting. In the meantime, uh, this is the afterwards party. Uh, the food was fantastic. 
And I was also invited as a visiting professor for two weeks. I was uh, teaching at the Tsinghua University in uh, fibers and textile program. What you see is a very energetic you know, studio space shared with the sophomore, junior, and senior, and you know, grad program students. I'm having a little problem technically here. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so these are the really lovely students who I had um, junior students and in the studio and my course was about uh, you know, uh, material exploration. So these students are working for two weeks with me intensely every day, uh, morning through the you know, afternoon. And so that's where I met this amazing colleague on my right on the screen, young professor, Professor U.S. Song. And uh, he was really trained also as a, you know, really tapestry base. And I think in China, it was really uh, popular with the, you know, gobelin style and even a lot of uh, uh, tapestry process and contemporary fibers. But uh, he was a very interested in technology. He's a really incorporating those kind of uh, new processes and how he would like to bring the, um, those processes into students. And so I met this amazing colleague on the far left. I don't know if you can see uh, in the first low, uh, Li Hui. She is a curatorial assistant for this project. So she was a colleague of uh, Professor Yue Song and we developed this uh, grand project together since 2018. So these are 40 artists you can see in the screenshot. I don't know some of you had opportunity to get into the uh, you know, exhibition site. Uh, I hope you can check in. The exhibition site is already on uh, you know, last, since last Monday and it will go on to December uh, 24th for the Christmas Eve. But uh, it's, it's really amazing because you can see the broad spectrum of this artist from you know, uh, just a really amazing hands-on technique to even technology, digital processes and performances. So, uh, so what I'd like to show you is uh, some of uh, uh, artists' images locally. Uh, I wanna introduce our um, you know, colleagues from Philadelphia. I will start with Heather Uzier, who is a faculty member at Moore College of Art and Design. And she's a really um, amazing artist who has been working with the digital printing. And um, you know, she has really elaborate this imagery working on this really large mega scale working with the imagery. She often also paints over, you know, hand painting and also does work with the mixed media. And so you can see the, some of the uh, detail. And also Warren Selig, he's not local anymore. He's in you know, uh, Rockland, Maine, but he commutes to University of the Arts for past, what, uh, you know, many years. And this is actually the uh, installation project that he did at the uh, Farnsworth Art Museum in Maine. And this is a you know, really stretch mark of uh, monofilament and he's kind of really working you know, intensely with this kind of one-on-one -on -one lines to kind of bring the light to in it. And so he really talking a lot about uh, evolving sensation in textile. It's not so much as objects. So he talks about relationship with the space and you can see this really intense process. And many of you seen this piece already. This is my uh, project, Yellow Forest. Uh, originally was installed at the uh, you know, International um, Airport. And this particular image was uh, taken at the um, Navy Yard uh, Anthropology Gallery. And you can see the, some of details here. And then next artist is Roland Rickett. Uh, he was uh, mastered in indigo from Japan and he brought as this amazing process as ambassador to really introduce this amazing process. And you can see this really amazing installation process here. And then Jennifer Angus from Minnesota. Um, she also had a, um, you know, many exhibitions in Philadelphia, including Philadelphia Art Alliance. She was working a lot with the insects and really bring this kind of Baroque imagery, like amazing installation work uh, with this found objects and replica and a lot of hands-on carving with wax. And also even performance. You know, we talk a lot about textiles as objects, but uh, Zai Yong Yun from uh, Brooklyn, New York City, she also talks a lot about uh, you know, her work object relationship with her performance. 
And so I hope you can see, visit the site and you can kind of be able to, uh, you know, experience her amazing performance work. And I'd like to a little bit pause and then show you this wonderful video. This is actually a wallpaper and animated it through projection. And you can see this kind of a really evolving, uh, you know, uh, just kind of under the sea imagery, aquatic. I wish I could have it in my, you know, uh, bathroom or <laughs> any place in the house, but it just really uh, sensational. It's just, she's been, she had an exhibition at the uh, um, Museum of a Museum in, you know, um, Seattle and Washington. So these are some of a little taste of, uh, you know, 20 artists from uh, United States. And I'm sure, um, you know, you'll be able to see more of artists, but I'm gonna also move on to a few of the Chinese artists I'd like to introduce to you. I met this uh, lovely young student. Um, she graduated from um, graduate program at the Tianjin Academy of Fine Arts in China. Uh, this is also projected a screen onto this a beautiful object made out of, uh, you know, uh, just a one inch ribbon that she constructed. It's all white color, but she has a sound and also uh, this a beautiful imagery projection. So it was very interesting incorporating those objects with the, um, the digital process. And actually, I don't really know specific process of this work, but this amazing artist uh, from China kind of really bring this a membrane of uh, this, uh, you know, uh, just objects that actually made out of uh, found, uh, you know, actually wire. It's amazing construction. And then this is a, one of the last artists that I would like to highlight is that, uh, you know, I was happened to be early uh, in Beijing with this artist um, from Hangzhou. And this kind of really a traditional uh, Chinese armor, uh, the cloth is actually made out of uh, paper, but it's all, um, he twined, found text and newspaper. He actually made in his own twine thread and then he knitted. And so it was a really monumental scale, uh, it's amazing. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the detail shot of it. I'm so sorry, everybody, but I hope that uh, you'll be able to experience at the exhibition. And I would like to introduce the six speakers for tomorrow night, everyone. I really hope that you can join. This is going to be a lifetime experience, having just amazing speakers. Actually, Professor Lin Le Cheng is actually founder of the uh, From Lausanne to Beijing Biennale, which I you know, uh, talked about earlier. He's a gentleman who brought this uh, amazing international Biennale to, to Beijing. He actually has been doing a lot of a, a huge scale of um, like a large tapestry, but this particular project that he has shown for this exhibition is a collaboration with architects and you know, sculptors. So it's actually kind of a, the playground or kind of a interactive space for children, which I'm really curious. It's all made out of a construction of a bamboo and wood. And Li Hui, uh, also a collaborator for this event, uh, she is a PhD candidate from Tsinghua University for Fibrous Textile. And this is a beautiful little powder thread, but it's actually uh, processed by 3D uh, printing. And this is like a beautiful clouds format that she installed on the space. And then this is a last speaker for Chinese, uh, Ren Kuanghui. And, you know, this is a mixed media piece and actually it comes with the light, uh, lights. And I don't know quite, uh, you know, what scale, but it's a large, I believe, the installation scale. And then in uh, U.S., we have a Mark Newport, who actually um, head of a fibers at Cranbrook Academy of Art. Recent, uh, you know, past couple of years, he talks a lot about uh, relationship between textile and skin. And I'm really curious, he's a research. And then Leah Cook, uh, really known for jacket weaving for internationally. And she's also gonna share her body of uh, uh, work in history. And Wilson from Chicago Art Institute. 
And as you know, uh, she was actually at the uh, Whitney Biennale in 2002, like a really amazing work, uh, body book that she's developed. But past 10 years, she also has been collaboration with the dancers and installations. And most recently, her film has been shown in this exhibition with uh, her engineering scientist colleagues. So I think that, that could be really great to check out. And so uh, I'm excited to share with you for this information, everyone. I hope that you can join for the, not only exhibition, but tomorrow the symposium. The only thing I wanted to let you know is that the virtual exhibition, it's a little more geared toward to the iPhone or smartphone. It can probably scroll a little quickly. And then the symposium, it's a slightly different from Zoom. Uh, it's a Vogue meeting. And you can download those both meeting and then you can probably be able to get in, but it's a little tricky. You know, whenever I get in, it's a slightly different. So this one is already set, you know, with the decoding, you'll be able to get in. So I highly encourage you, if you'd like to attend it, please maybe practice one or twice. Um, I think that's, uh, that's my comments, everybody, because I don't want you to get lost. Uh, but, you know, having amazing Leah Cook and uh, Ann Wilson and, you know, Mark Newport and international artists together to hear their lectures, I think it would be it just, I think, amazing experience for everybody. Mi Kyung, thank you so much. Um, everything Mi Kyung does is absolutely extraordinary. And I, I don't know how she pulls such amazing things together so quickly and so effort, they look effortless, but um, they're just totally brilliant. Everyone in the chat said brilliant work. Mi Kyung, can you please put the chat, uh, in the chat, the link to get to the symposium tomorrow? Yes, I will, I will. Thank you so much for your support. I think that, you know, crafts is a, um, for me, I think the future is really there. And I know it's, it's under the COVID, it's, it's a quite, you know, uh, scary in higher ed, but I do think that this types of uh, virtual platform and uh, new technology can be in a way, a good way to connect. So uh, for the symposium tomorrow, we're expecting about over a thousand people. Wow. And because the Tsinghua University is one of the well-known, it's one of the wealthiest university, they actually broadcasted 40 media in China, 50 media is in the US, 20 media in Europe. And so um, we're expecting you know, high volume tomorrow. So I hope this is a, a very exciting menu for some of you to you know, join. I think it'll be wonderful. So I, I will share the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mi Kyung. We have one more presentation tonight. Yaoi founder Shannon Maldonado is walking us through some new products and artists she is excited about for this season. I had the chance to be introduced to her when um, hosting our fundraiser last year at the Deacon, which she curated and designed. Uh, Yaoi is a home and life shop focused on curating small collections from friends, independent artists, and designers with a storefront located at 716 South 4th Street in Queen Village. So Shannon, how is your day? <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi, I see some friends in here. Hi Rick and Ruth. Hi everyone. Um, hi Val. <laughs> um, it's good to be here. My day has kind of been kind of crazy. So we are kind of transitioning from being um, an open storefront to pretty much a web shop right now with COVID. Um, so we've kind of been pushing everyone to shop online, which is great, but we're still a very small team. So it's I feel like I work in a fulfillment center right now and less of a creative space. Um, I can't even swing around my computer because there's just boxes everywhere, but um, it's good. I'm happy and very uh, fortunate that we are, you know, still doing okay during all of this. But yeah, so we, thank you for the intro. Thanks for having me. Um, we are a storefront and then we also recently are like an up and coming design studio as well. So the Deacon uh, was our first project and I really, caught the bug of designing spaces. Um, I designed my store, you know, just out of utility and wanting to create this really great space for people to feel invited and to interact with products. And we really try to let the products speak for themselves. It's mostly white, really simple fixtures. And I love colorful, unique things. Um, and I definitely try to take a, you know, democratic and global approach to how we curate everything. So you don't have to have a design degree. You don't have to have been doing it forever, or you can have been doing it forever, but we really do just pick things that, 
we feel will excite people or evoke emotion. Um, you know, I love color, as you'll see in a second. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to share. I'm going to mostly focus on ceramics because um, that's a really big thing that I love to curate um, and it's a big start of our brand. Um, so I'm going to start with this is one of my favorite pieces that we have in the shop right now. This is by um, an artist you know as Chen and Kai Williams. It actually reminded me of some of the work we just saw. It's really playful. Um, but what's funny about this is it has a little bag on it. And this bag is full of miniature money. I don't know if you guys can even see that. <laughs> so uh, we we have a sense of humor about our brand and we work with artists that also have a sense of humor. So this is one of my favorites that's in the shop right now. They're based in New York and they do a mix of fine uh, furniture and then they also create these really small quirky objects. Um, this is a new artist we brought in recently. Her name is Danielle Yukari and she just makes really beautiful simple work but I love how bold the stripe is. Um, it feels kind of like my friend was saying this new phrase the other day, nostalgia, which is like this mix of new and old. So it feels like it's from the 70s, but it's brand new. And then we also have a matching bowl to this guy, which I love. So just really fun stuff. We like fun stuff, but we also like to, you know, keep it timeless. We love cups. We always have way too many cups in here. I, I cannot stop over curating cups. Um, but this is an artist based in LA. Um, her name is Sarah Yukua Todd, and her brand is Yukua. So she makes these really beautiful, simple tumblers in like a matte finish on the outside, like a clear glaze in the center. Um, a quick story I will share is that when I started the brand about a year in, I noticed I was having a lot of trouble communicating with the artists and I kept getting messed up orders or things were taking a long time and I didn't quite understand because I'm not trained in ceramics or fine art. I went to school for apparel design. So I went to um, a two week residency at Watershed to learn how to make ceramics. And it was incredible and the most humbling thing I've ever done. I think I cried about three or four times <laughs> during the two weeks I was there because ceramics is one of the hardest things to do. I have so much respect for it, especially after I did it myself. Um, and it's something that I try, we try as when we can to educate our customers about the process, uh, especially when people ask about price points and you know different things. It is such a hands-on process. You can work on something for weeks and it can blow up in the kiln you know, in an hour, which is crazy. So um, one of my favorite things, as I said, let me see. This is from a local artist, uh, Peyton Flynn. Uh, she goes by Cloud9 Ceramics. And it's funny, some of our ceramists have like, kind of like alter egos, their names for their lines that they make up. Um, but her stuff reminds me of a lot of like 70s pottery, which is really cool. And she's kind of reinvented it for a younger audience. She does a lot of speckled bodies. Um, and a lot of hand-drawn work and like really interesting glazes. And then this is one of our uh, best sellers. We usually carry it in yellow, but we can't keep it in stock, but this is by Louise Sullivan. And it's really great. I actually visited Louise's um, studio the other day and she has a studio with her mother and they both do ceramics. Uh, they're based out of Fishtown, which is really cute. So they sit across the room from each other making ceramics. And the irony is that Louise, I think is, 24 and her mom has a bigger Instagram following than her um, of the ceramics that she makes, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, but yeah, these are just like, I use this at home almost every day. It's an amazing water cup. Um, right now we have it in this white matte glaze. It's hard to see on the video, but it has like a really subtle crackle to it. And then we also carry it um, in a bright yellow. Yellow is like a brand color for us, my favorite color. Um, but those are, it's holiday time, so everything's going crazy. Um, so those are some ceramics. Oh, actually, this one is really fun, too. This is also by Chen and Kai. They have this legs bowl, um, which is based on Chinese uh, porcelain. And then this guy comes with little shoes, his little slippers. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. They're, they're like evil scientists, their work. They're so fun. Um, but yeah, we are, so unfortunately, like I said, we are closed for like indoor browsing, we might do appointments soon um, for people who are looking, but it's just, you know, just trying to be safe. But we do do pickups on the weekends. I'm also happy to bring anything to the door to show everyone because everything, you know, is really fun and tactile to play with. But uh, we have tons of amazing products uh, from artists all over, um, as, as well as obviously some Philly artists. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. This is actually a nice one too. I told you so many cups. Uh, this is by my friend, Sarah Husseini. 
she's based in New York and she goes by not work related as her brand. Um, so this is a great everyday mug. But yeah, if you are in the neighborhood or you're online, uh, definitely check us out. Uh, we bring in new stuff right now about every week uh, with the holiday. And then um, if you follow us on Instagram, that's where we post all of our projects. So outside of the shop, uh, we also do interior design and creative direction. So we're wrapping up a project in Providence right now that's a really, really cool hotel called Die House. Um, it's in an old Waybosset wool mill and we're turning it into like an event space and a community space and then it has four amazing rooms. So it's like a very special place. Um, and then what else? We're, we're working on our own space next year, but it's in very, very, very early stages. Uh, so we're trying to open a boutique hotel that's attached to Yaoi. Uh, hopefully in late 2021 or 2022. Uh, so that's a dream project of mine. But yeah, those are those are some of my favorite things right now. So that's super exciting. I, I also follow you on Instagram. So tell us a little bit about um, supporting this boutique hotel project you have in the works. Yeah, so I'm not sure when we're going to open. Um, we're definitely very close to finishing construction, all the details. But if you follow them, it's Die House RI on Instagram, we've been starting to share. I love sharing behind the scenes of my process. Um, and like I said, I love color. I love, you know, details and textures as you guys will see in that space. And then I think probably early next year we'll be taking bookings, but we do have a really cute line of merch that's coming out soon. Um, we have some ceramics that we specifically curated for that space that will be for sale from local artists. And I think what I'm really proud of with that project is that I think the first time I went there was a year ago, just to check out the site uh, with my friend that's doing the project. And I feel like we've just become so ingrained in the community over that short amount of time. We have so many friends there. There's an incredible community of artists in Providence, Rhode Island. It, it really blew us away. And they've all been so friendly and just everyone sends us to another person. It's It's been really cool. So I feel like we have a second kind of Philly family up there now, just from going back and forth. And it, it's a really, really, it's a project that I'm very proud of and I can't wait to share more about it. So I have a couple questions for you. I can see people are browsing already on your website. Um, <laughs> can you link to the piece with the three legs? Yes, hold on, let me pull it. And also what is your Instagram? Handle? Yes, our Instagram's hello yaoi. And this is a side note. This has nothing to do with what I just showed you guys, but Part of the reason I'm late is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I read with uh, Philadelphia Reading Coaches. It's a great program, it's now virtual, and we sit with children every week and read with them for an hour to help them gain confidence in their reading. So if anyone's interested in that too, please let me know. I've been doing it for a few years and it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, my kid is very shy this year and he doesn't really talk much, but I know that you know he's getting something out of it and it's a really great program. So if you have like an hour to spare, um, it's really, it's really cool. And it's been, I'll add that to the chat too. Yes, definitely. Um, I don't see, I don't see them coming through. Just in oh, case. I'm looking, hold on. Just right. case, sometimes when people chat privately, you have to go back over it. Oh yeah, hold on. <laughs> um, okay. Any last questions? Oh, there we go, I see it. Leg bowls there. I, if anyone has a question, I think we're late enough in the program, you can unmute yourself. And if not, I'm going to say thank you to Shannon and to everyone for joining us tonight. This has been a really interesting evening. We've gone from retail to gallery to international exhibition to um, local exhibition over Western Pennsylvania artists. It's just really fantastic that we're all able to stay connected and support one another this way. Um, Can we say one thing? Please. Uh, oh, uh, hey. My, my adopted parents are here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Edward and this is my wife Val. We got to meet some of you, or if not most of you last year at uh, the Craft Now event at the Deacon. It was our favorite event of the year. That's Layla, you did an amazing job. And if Clara's on this call somewhere, she hi, is. Clara. Uh, we hope you're doing well. And I see Rick and Ruth up in my corner. Right. Who um, have been nothing but wonderful to us for ooh, the last 12 or 
10 or 12 years, I think it's been that long. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, just for everybody to know about Shannon, she's, she's really one of the most wonderful and kind spirited person we've ever come in contact with. She's been such a big part of our lives and the project at the Deacon and also at the Dye House, but I'm gonna force her to divulge a little bit more to this group about Yowie Townhouse because I'm really proud of her and what that project is gonna become. Um, and I just think uh, everybody on this call and Zoom would love to hear more about it. I think that's what I was angling for, but I love that you guys are working at Providence too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Everett and I, I, I went to Everett about a year ago and I was telling him that I wanted to find a way to expand our business out of retail because I do see our brand as such a lifestyle brand and just something that really is built upon community and lifestyle and every day. And I grew up in South Philly, but I lived in New York for a long time and came back years ago to start this. And I just always was like, what are, what is the hotel of Philly? Like what is a Philly red hotel known for, you know, and just kept being, having these conversations about it. And then finally I was like, wait, do, should we open a hotel? I'm like, should Yowie have a hotel? Which seems so crazy to even say out loud because I started this brand with 12 products online and to now almost five years later be thinking that way is really exciting. So what the plan is, is that we want to open a, an eight to 12 room hotel above our shop. Uh, we also want to have a photo studio that people can rent with us or work with us, so um, have a space for our design studio as well, which is growing. Um, and then just, you know, be or something really, the goal for my brand is to become synonymous with Philly. You know, like I want people to come to Philly for us and see all the amazing things that are here. And it's just every weekend that I'm in the shop, we get visitors from Baltimore, New York, LA, and they're all like, wow, Philly's got a lot of stuff here. And I'm like, yeah, we've been telling you this. So like, we want to be that first stop. We want to be your eyes to the city. We want to create this unique um, space and this unique experience for you. Um, and what's really exciting, I'm very superstitious, so I won't say exactly where it is, but we're trying to do it on South Street. And I just, I went to South Street so much as a kid. I have so many memories of South Street. My store right now is a few blocks from there. And the idea of being a positive anchor on a street that has for years been forgotten is the most exciting thing to me and when I tell my friends that grew up here they're like South Street oh my god that's so cool like you got to do it so the just the whole project in so many ways is so personal and so exciting and I can't wait for us to get to the next step we're like you know we're speaking to a building we're in due diligence and I just can't wait to keep going because I think it really is and I feel like a jerk saying this, I feel like it's one of the most exciting projects that's going to come out in the next few years um, here. And I'm so honored and excited to be at the head of it. So I can't wait. I can't wait to have you all there. Hopefully we won't be vaccined and we won't have masks and we'll be drinking and it'll be wonderful. So we can't wait to see you there. Well, I'm excited for that. I definitely <laughs> won't come to the, any party there. <laughs> <laughs> keep us posted on that and yeah. everyone keep us posted i hope um you guys can all get to the clay studio tomorrow enjoy that international symposium and see also bertrand productions so shannon before i invite everyone to unmute themselves do you want to give us a little peek of the fulfillment center there oh my god it's a disaster <laughs> let's see let's look at it oh wow <laughs> It's a mess. I did upgrade to a wagon, which I'm very proud of. I have a shipping wagon now, and I feel so cool walking into UPS with that. And I have bungee straps, and I just have like a pile of packages. It's so it's so awesome. Versus my two IKEA bags and a really bad dolly with like a broken wheel system that I had two weeks ago. So yeah, we've upgraded our wheels. <laughs> a good problem to have this time of year. No, it's great. We're very fortunate. We're very fortunate. <laughs> Everybody, please unmute yourself, say hello, and we'll give a final toast before everyone goes off to continue with the next dinner and drinking. Thanks, everybody. That was amazing. Cheers. A great, great evening. Great evening. I'd like to say something about yep, of Shannon. I just can't get over your taste. You know, being with you in Rhode Island and seeing you pick out all those textiles, like it was overwhelming and you were right on to get exactly what felt right for the new dye works. Thank you. And for Val and for
for Everett. We're ready to help you anytime with your <laughs> next <sure>. project. <laughs> Love you guys. Yep. I'm going to give credit to Rick and I should give the South Street project since you guys used to have a gallery there. Right. <laughs> we get to thank um, Rick and Ruth for introducing us to Val and Everett and the what? Deacon. Right. We were we were just wringing our hands about where to have our um, fundraiser, and they said a brand new space has just opened. You have to go see it, and we made an appointment. I think Elisa's on this call. We made an appointment the next week, and that was the rest was done. Well, thank you again for having me and for letting me share some things. Yeah, um, thank you for being wonderful. here. Wonderful evening. To see thank everybody. You. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.